Hi everyone, it's Melissa and today I would like to share with you some great books that I read in August. So this is not a wrap up of everything I read in August, but these are just books that didn't fit into other wrap up videos that I've been making, which are more themed. So I haven't had the opportunity to share them with you or talk about them. So this is basically just a random <laughs> mishmash of a few books that I think are worth mentioning. So the first one I want to mention is something that I've been reading as part of the uh, reading history challenge. I will leave the host to that challenge below. This was um, a non-fiction history uh, readathon hosted in the last two weeks of August. And I still haven't finished this book because I'm, I'm taking it kind of slow and and picking away at it to absorb it a little bit better. Um, but I feel like at this point I've read enough of it to share a couple thoughts. Um, and the book is Policing Black Lives, State Violence in Canada from Slavery to the Present by Robin Maynard. So my thoughts on this are that it's very thorough. Um, the author talks about a lot of different topics. So it starts, um, with a, a chapter talking about anti-blackness um, from slavery to segregation um, and kind of like uh, the Jim Crow era. It moves to racial capitalism and more um, contemporary um, issues in anti-blackness um, to um, the racial racialization of crime, so um, police profiling, war on drugs, immigration and border regulation and anti-blackness there, um, education in the school system, and so on and so forth. So it's very, very thorough and is very well cited, which I really appreciate. It's full of a lot of really important examples. I don't think there's anything, at least as far as I've read so far, um, there's nothing groundbreaking in here. There's nothing where I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that. Um, but maybe for some people, this would be um, more eye-opening, but I still got a lot out of it because the reason I picked this up is because it's through the Canadian lens specifically, whereas a lot of the other um, anti-racist literature out there tends to be more, um, centered on American experience. Um, I've also seen a couple of books out of the UK, but because I live in Canada, I really wanted to get this perspective. And I think that's really important because I think as Canadians, uh, we like to really downplay the racism in our own country and look to America and say, well, we're not that bad or we're not racist like they are. And that's just not true. And we really like to erase our racist um, history, especially with regards to blackness. I think more Canadians are becoming more aware of um, our racism regarding our indigenous um, communities, but have not acknowledged, and we still have <laughs> a long way to go there, um, but we really have not acknowledged racism against the black community in Canada. Um, in Canada, if you're not from here, we, we really like to toot our own horns in terms of the Underground Railroad and how um, people, like black uh, people who were escaping slavery were fleeing to Canada and we like to give ourselves a pat on the back um, as being this place for freedom seekers um, when really we had problems, um, we didn't treat black people well, there was segregation. Um, I don't think a lot of Canadians maybe realize that we did have slavery here. I think a lot of Canadians think that slavery was purely an American um, institution, if you can call it that. Um, but slavery existed here. Slavery of black people existed in Canada. Um, segregation uh, in school systems existed in Canada so on and so forth. We had all the same problems. We just, um, even more so maybe than the United States, do not acknowledge that part 
of our history. So in that regards, I think uh, this is a very important read for Canadians specifically. So the other kind of books that I randomly wanted to just share with you, um, I have two books and just a couple, couple of poetry collections. So the first one I want to mention is The Deep by Rivers Solomon. So this book follows this, they're kind of like, not quite mermaids, um, they're a society of sea life called the Wajinru, and they are the descendants of black women who were thrown overboard from slave ships crossing the Atlantic. Um, so this, obviously there's some magical realism involved where, um, I, I should say pregnant women, where their um, babies were born as, like underwater, as these mermaid type um, creatures called Wajinru. The... Wajinru as a society um, have the ability to share um, and relate memory directly through like almost like electromagnetic pulses or something. Um, and they've set up their society in such a way that they have um, one person, one individual called the historian, who is the keeper of all of the history and the memory and everyone else in the society um, has very like short-term memory, so they don't remember things fully, and it's the historian's job to keep all of the history and all of the memory. There's definitely a lot in here, obviously, about the importance of history um, as a burden, but also as a form of knowing about yourself or identity. I, I really was interested in kind of the concept of what identity meant to the Rijinru when, aside from one of them, um, they didn't have any collective um, memory about their past. So what was anchoring them in their identity um, was maybe different than the identity that the historian felt as a Wajinru. And there are themes of, um, of course, like what history means and how you can't really div divorce yourself from your history because what happens is the historian in the story um, has a desire to rid herself of the history because it is a burden to her. And you follow kind of what happens to her and to the individuals she leaves behind when that history is forgotten. There's also a lot about responsibility in here, responsibility to your community, to yourself, to your ancestors. There is way more in here than I could talk about in a quick little summary or review. I initially gave this three stars. It's one of those books that you have to sit with, and the longer I sit with it, the more um, highly I think about it. Um, it's probably more like a four to me right now, and I really, really want to reread this maybe next year because I feel like it would go up even higher in my estimation because I listened to this on audio, and it's nothing against the narrator or anything like that, but I just don't think that this book works as well on audio as it would reading physically, at least for me. I think there's too much to tease apart. I think I would probably have to reread passages, go back to things um, to really get everything. And especially as a white person where there's a lot of nuance here that I might not get um, because I haven't lived the black experience. And of course, there's a lot about the black experience woven into this story. So I feel like I, I need to sit with like a physical copy and read it that way. So if you were considering picking this up, I would highly recommend reading it in physical copy if you can over audio. Um, and if you want to know more about the nuance of this book, um, I would recommend checking out a live chat hosted by um, Ashley from Bookish Realm. And I forget the other creators. I know Erica from um, Broken Spine was also there, but um, they had a very long live discussion about this book. 
it's several hours and I've been kind of consuming it in chunks, but um, very thorough, very interesting discussion. I will link it below if you would like to check that out after you read the book. I thought it was super informative and definitely um, helped me appreciate the book a lot more as well. Another book that I really wanted to put on your radar is a middle grade. So if you're new here, I really do enjoy middle grade. Um, and I use it a bit sometimes as maybe a palette cleanser. I find a lot of comfort and familiarity in middle grade. It takes me back to childhood, even if it's something I've never read before. And that was just the vibe I needed when I picked up this book. And that book is Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwame Mbalia. This book follows Tristan Strong, who is a seventh grader. He has recently lost his best friend in an accident, so he is struggling processing his grief. Um, he is sent to live with his grandparents for a month to work on their farm down in Alabama. He lives in Chicago. So he goes down to Alabama, uh, Alabama with them. His parents think it will be good for him to kind of help heal um, as he is struggling with his grief. Now, when he gets there, he ends up being transported into another realm where African, um, like West African and African American folktale mythology are real. There is kind of like tension or conflict, I guess, between the um, West African gods and the um, characters from um, African American folktale. And Tristan is kind of <laughs> caught between them and trying to solve this problem of all these like monsters attacking the people living there and he's trying to help the folks there deal with that and then trying to repair the hole that he has punched accidentally in the sky um, which kind of started this whole mess. It is so delightful. I gave this um, four stars. If I was a kid reading this, I would probably give it five stars. I just thought it was so much fun, but also the darker elements were handled seriously. I just thought the balance between um, humor, adventure, and like darker um, subjects were just were really well balanced. What I really liked about this as well was it, it didn't shy away from the truth of the history. Um, like where these folk tales came from, they're rooted in um, black experience in terms of um, slavery and really horrible, horrible things. And it didn't shy away from that history. The monsters in this book are um, something called iron monsters, and they're literally like chains and shackles that are like anthropomorphized in a way or like kind of animalistic. Um, so all of the beasts and all of the enemies are very rooted to in like black history. And I just really appreciated that it didn't shy away from those things. I mean, it was all age appropriate, but it really bugs me when children's books um, don't trust children with information or when they gloss over things or kind of like pander almost or talk down to, I guess is a better way to say that. I don't like it when children's books talk down to kids. Like you're writing for kids, write for kids. Don't talk down to them. This book does not talk down to children. I loved it. There's a lot about dealing with grief, of course, but also about responsibility and courage and feelings of guilt and forgiveness and, of course, the importance of history and storytelling is a big part of this book. Um, some of the characters are a Nancy, or is it a Nancy? I don't know how to pronounce that, but the um, storyteller, trickster, weaver, god of West African mythology. Um, and so stories pay, play and storytelling play a big role and the power of that, um, and like literally the power of that is needed to defeat the enemies in this book. I just found the whole world so fascinating. Um, there were some characters that I recognized, like Anansi and, um, John Henry, like, I'm familiar with that, 
um, folk story, but then there were others that I was not familiar with. Um, what was the one? The Sky God and Yame and um, Hi John. I wasn't familiar with that um, folk tale. So there was also a lot of new characters, like a lot of new mythology that I was introduced to that I could like, look up later. So that was fun. If you want um, a better review of this, I will link um, Seji from the Artisan Geeks uh, review that she did last fall, um, which I thought was great. So the last two things I wanted to mention, I'm going to do very quickly, and they were just two poetry collections. Um, one was Don't Call Us Dead by Denez Smith. I gave this five stars. This is a collection about um, being Black, queer, and HIV positive. I would describe this collection as very powerful and thought-provoking. Um, it's one of those thinkers. <laughs> you know, like you read a poem and you're like, oh, geez, I need to read that again. And um, I actually listened to this on audio um, narrated by Denez Smith. Um, I find it really hard to review poetry collections, so that's all I'm going to say. Um, and the last poetry collection, which I actually liked, I also gave five stars, but I actually liked it better than um, Denez Smith's uh, collection, which is saying something, but it is A Fortune for Your Disaster by Hanif Abdurraqib, Abdurraqib um, which I also listened to on audio narrated by Hanif. Um, this there were a lot of different things. I found this one, I wouldn't say fun because there are definitely dark elements to this poetry collection as well. Um, and it really, a lot of them deal with grief and heartbreak as kind of like overall themes that run through the collection. But there are some like more fun elements, I guess is not the word, like interesting elements, I guess. There are a series, there is a series of poems written in the voice of um, Marvin Gaye, I think it was. There's a whole series kind of like about Tesla. Um, anyway, just very um, interesting collection. I was going to choose a word to describe this collection. I would call it reflective. So there you go. If you like poetry, check out those two collections. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll talk soon. Take care. Bye.